Hello and welcome back to another painting session with me Phelan. I hope you've been looking after yourselves and keeping well and I hope you did well with the idea of drawing and painting the apple and I also put up a little uh, a simple little sketch with markers and crayons to help those of you who don't have paints to maybe think about doing a little bit. It's another wonderful day here beautiful and it's bright and the beauty of these long days it's an ideal opportunity for everybody to perhaps do a little bit of drawing and painting to, to express their creativity. Today I've decided to do something in loose landscape painting and this is the piece that I've decided to do for you. As you can see it's an old photograph. This is a photograph I've had probably, oh God, I must have this about at least 30 years. It's up on Donegal. I can't remember where in Donegal it is and I've used it once or twice for demonstrations in my school. Um, and this is the one I'm going to do for you. It's an evening, a winter's evening as you can see um, the light is beautiful. Perhaps the camera doesn't pick it up as well as it might. It, this one, get, you get a better sense of it in that. You can see everything is quite sullen and subdued but it's quite a beautiful little piece to do and that's what we're going to do today. Now, just to show you, I'm a great believer in the idea of using whatever comes to hand rather than having to have particular materials. And so just for today's demonstration, I've decided to do a piece on brown paper. So I'm going to be using oil paint on brown paper. This is an old scrap of brown paper I found here in the house this morning and I decided that would be ideal. And what I like about using something like old brown paper is that because it already has a colour, it's almost like a base or foundation. And we talked before uh, when I was doing the apples about the idea of an underpainting. Well, this almost has the underpainting on it and also where I drew out the apples with pencil for today's demonstration I'm going to simply draw it with brush because it's a much more simplistic composition insofar as its orientation it doesn't have an enormous amount of detail well it does but not necessarily um, excessively so and the advantage of that is that it's very facilitative to being suggested rather than being rigid and I am going to do this as I said as a loose landscape painting so for those of you who really like the idea of painting loosely and painting freely the thing to remember about painting loose or painting free is that it's about interpretation. So when you're taking something like this, it's not about putting in every single line, mark and tick. It's about uh, trying to capture the feeling of atmosphere in as simplistic a fashion as possible. So <clears throat> the easiest analogy I would use is that people oftentimes think that loose painting is easy. It is not. Loose painting is oftentimes more difficult than much more than let's say more defined painting because for loose painting to be successful, it's about leaving out a certain amount. But of course, you have to make sure that you leave out the requisite amount and keep in the right amount. So if it takes, for example, eight, eight, eight strokes to create something, in loose painting, you're trying to break that down to maybe four or five strokes. So you have to consider which strokes you leave out so that those that you do put in still create the essence and the idea of what it is you're looking at. So before you undertake something loose, it's important to take your time to analyze, look at it. And again, I talked before about doing some prep drawings and in something like this, it's never a bad idea to do one or two prep paintings as well. The other thing I like about painting on paper, be it scraps of paper or old canvases or bits of cardboard you have lying around is that I find when I'm teaching that there's psychology when people are working with canvas because they're working with either a canvas on board or a stretch canvas they feel that it has to be perfect that it has to be right and there's a sense that if it doesn't work out the canvas is lost whereas I often find when I'm talking with my students and I'm getting them to do little preparation works oftentimes the studies are far more loose far more free and far more natural paintings because they're not concerned about wasting a canvas because they're working on paper so it's not a bad idea to perhaps consider doing some work on bits of paper first to get used to it and try to express yourself in the sense of freedom now here we have very similar colors to the last time when I was working with the apple I tend to use a similar palette most of the time so I have my titanium white I have my chrome yellow my cadmium yellow deep my uh, cadmium red as you can see there's a lot of linseed in that and it's been sliding down my palette on me uh, permanent rose Thalo blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, which too has started to lean down and it's touching off my viridian green and my burnt umber. And what I'm going to do is just very simplistically draw out this little scene here. And I'm not worried whether or not I put in every single detail. As I said, it's about interpretation. So I want to get the atmosphere of the light and a little bit of drama in terms of the feeling of contrast between the landscape darkness and the light in the sky. But of course, I'll give myself the freedom to do as I wish. So to start off with, I'm going to take a violet color and I'm using a little bit of liquid to thin the paint rather than white spirit because liquid doesn't stain the paper. White spirits tends to stain the paper, be it white paper or brown paper, more easily. So a little bit of liquid gives you that fluidity from a drawing perspective, but you're not staining your paper. It's not bleeding out on you. Now with this, I can see that my horizon line, so my horizon line is about here. It's less than halfway. So you can see it's one, two, but two and a quarter two and a half times or thereabouts so I want to start well below halfway for a sense of balance so I'll just check that and see if does that give me that one two I'm still below halfway so we'll take that as the horizon line and just run that across 
Now when I draw and brush like this, my aim is to try and leave in some of the drawing lines to create a sense of freedom and simplicity. So in order to be loose and in order to be simplistic, don't fill in every single space and don't put in too much paint and color because if you do that, it ends up having to fill in and the more you put in, the more you have to deal with and the more complex it becomes. Where simplicity, as the term suggests, is based on less is more. So as much as you can, you're trying to utilize some of your um, drawing as part of the simplicity of itself, the composition rather. So I'm just gonna suggest the divisions in the field. So these lines will suggest to me the idea of the bushes that divide up the field and also some of the bushes themselves. And there's lovely angles here and there coming through in terms of the fields and the bushes broken up into these spaces. And I want to create that sort of scrappy feeling. I'm purposely looking for that, as I said, less is more. So I'm not gonna be over detailing in terms of the drawing. The more space I have, the more suggestive I can be. And that's what I want to be. And I want to be quite quick. I don't want to spend ages and ages because once more, the more time you spend on it, the more inclined towards detail we go, even without realizing it, subconsciously you start putting in more. And the more you put in, the more you have to put in, whereas less is very definitely more. So every now and then, stop, step back, look at what you're doing and assess it and don't feel compelled to just be too heavy handed. So just creating a little bit of sullenness here and there on the paper itself. There's a few sheep in this and I'll add those in later on. Now, it's the sky that really drew me to this. I, I took this photograph, I said about 20 year, 30 years ago when I was up in Donegal. I can remember the evening, it was a winter's evening, it was a beautiful evening. And I saw the sun while driving one sometime and I stopped. And this was back in the days when you didn't have digital cameras. You had to take a photograph and wait then till you developed it several weeks later and hope that it came out right. And it's one that it's always been a favorite of mine. I said I've used it several times over the years, both myself and as demonstrations for my students. Now, that's as much as I want on my drawing for now. I'm happy to leave that. And I'm now going to start with the sky. And I've put in nothing in on the sky, because you can see my sky has a lot of brightness to it. So I don't wish to have any darkness into that space. And I'm going to start with the light. So I'll just put that in there. I'm taking my bigger brush again. With loose free painting, the rule would always be use the biggest brush possible because with the larger brush, you're less inclined to put in too much detail. You're less inclined to fiddle and that's the key. Simplicity is the key. So I have, um, you can see here, I have my soft clouds here and here and then the darker ones at the bottom. So what I want to try and do is get an expression of this broad sense of light. But most people might assume, or they're not necessarily most people, but a lot of people would assume that you put in your sky first and then put the clouds in on top. I spoke with you about the idea of positive and negative space when we're working with the apples and the idea that you paint your positive spaces first and then your negative spaces second. So in this case, my positive spaces would be my clouds. My negative space would be the blue light sky around it. So I would purposely put in a representation of my clouds first and then I'll add in the space around. And that way it gives more freedom. Whereas if I put in the blues and the lights first and then try and put the clouds in on top, it becomes too uh, mushy and it doesn't work. It just becomes too heavy handed. So the idea is to keep them separate and not to be afraid to leave little bits of space of the brown paper underneath. So I'm going to start with some white and a small amount of liquid. So I may do the sky over two or three phases. Again, I don't know. I have an intention to be loose, but I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out. So I'm just going to gauge it organically as I go along. So I'll put in a soft color first initially, see how that works. And then if I need to build into that a little bit more. And I'm going to start with white and a small touch of cadmium yellow deep. And I'm going to work that in for the idea of these larger clouds that I see here. And using the brush, this is a size 8 filbert that I'm working with. So just to use the side of the brush to get a general sense of freedom into it and into these spaces here. Now some of my violet may still be a little bit wet and may bleed in and that's okay. So all I'm trying to do is just get a sense of where everything sits at this point in time. I'll leave this into this area. Adding a little bit more. Now I'm going to enliven this space with a little bit more richness in my yellow. So adding a touch more cadmium yellow deep, taking a tiny touch of the cadmium red into that and warming that up as well here, just picking up a little bit of that there into that space and leaving my edges loose and free. I'm looking for a certain unevenness about the edges to give that lovely gentility and softness to it. Bring in little bits of that color into these clouds here and also up into this space. Now I said, I've no doubt I will be coming back in and putting much more weight into these later on, but for now I'm just trying to get a feeling. I'm just trying to suggest where everything sits. Now I'm taking a small amount of the violet I used for 
my drawing and mixing that into these colors here. I'm gonna put a little bit more red in there to have it not too gray, I want a little bit more warmth. And I'm gonna use that for the set of clouds that I see this beautiful range of clouds just coming across here. And you can see I'm trying to express the sense of freedom that I have with the brush. So I'm letting it create a softness. And clouds are just moisture. They're very soft and fluffy. So what we don't want are hard edges on the clouds. We want a certain amount of softness. And you can see particularly with the light here, there's no hard edges. It's really difficult to decipher exactly where the cloud begins and end. And so we want to get that sense of softness about what we have. I think the same here. And because I'm, I'm not using too much paint, I really have to work with putting the paint in. And that's fine. It means I can't overdo it. it gives a nice feeling of atmosphere. Uh, and softness into what I have. When I have that, there's a little bit of distant mountain just showing through. It's very hard for you to see it on the photograph, just along here. So I'm going to come in over the violet line that I had, and I'm going to put some of this colour in over that, just to get again that sense of expression and softness into the distance, into that space. You can see I'm really having to scratch in the colour get that feeling coming into it. Now from there, I'm just going to clean off the brush because I need a bit of purity for the idea of my blues and my lights coming in from here. So what we're dealing with is this extremely brash feeling of winter light coming in from the right hand side. So you can see that it's really, really bright in here. And as it comes in, it's highlighting the underside of the clouds. So you can see the underside because the sun is very low in the sky. So the underside of the clouds here are lit up and this light streams across creating a lovely sense of softness. So you've got this beautiful brightness here. It becomes much, much more soft blue into this space and then slightly darker into this area. And you can see the somewhat golden color of the sunlight over here. So it's almost sunset, but not quite. So I'm gonna start once again with the idea of this and the idea of the white and a little bit of the cadmium yellow. Just start to let that build in a little bit more here. This space. And the thing about working on paper is that the oil absorbs in really, really quickly. So again, you may remember on the Apple demonstration, I talked about having a certain tackiness on the surface to be able to get a sense of adherence of the paint. With paper, it happens very quickly because it absorbs so much and the paint seems to dry. I'm now going to take a little bit of the cerulean blue into that, a little bit of cobalt. I'm going to use that for my colors just coming in here. Start putting that little bit of bright blue. Letting it bleed in. Letting that just come across. And then a little bit more strength in my blue here. And I take a tiny touch of the thaler blue and just strengthen up the blue into this top corner behind that cloud there. And that is my first layer of colour where I've represented all the various different colours into what I have and I've got a sense of the colouring in terms of the light progressing from the right on into this. Now I need to start intensifying that and picking up a little bit more drama into those spaces. I'm going to just soften down here a little. And I don't want to clarify everything. I want to leave a certain amount to suggestibility and to imagination because we, we tend to look at what we see and we don't necessarily pick up on all of the details. So we pick up on the details we understand and by assumption we build in the rest of the picture in our mind's eye. So we don't have to have every single detail in for it to be a successful composition in that regard. Now, what I'm going to do again is just rinse off my brush. And now I'm going to mix up a lot more color and a lot more weight of the color. So once more back into the white and the cadmium yellow deep. And really putting this in without any liquid this time, just putting a little bit more boldness into that space. And using the side of the brush, the flat side of the brush to get a little bit more movement into it. Letting that drift up to the underside of this cloud here so that it's influenced by the same feeling of light. And letting that drift across here. Letting some of that golden light just start to hit off this large cloud. And again, quite haphazard, I'm not trying to attempt to um, copy exactly the same shapes that are there. I just want an interpretation of that. You can see I'm putting the light on quite heavily to get a little bit more definition. So as before, the lights themselves are quite impassed or textured and it really interacts with the natural light. You get this sense of drama coming through as a consequence. Pull this down here, let that drift over. There's another little soft cloud just creeping in from the top there. I'm just gonna put that in here. Now what I'm going to do with that is using the top of my brush, using the blade of the brush, I'm gonna start putting in little bits of highlights just along this range of sullen clouds here. 
And I'm going to dull them down a little on the left so they're not quite as powerful. Just creeping light coming into those spaces. And again across here, just very gently skipping the brush across so that I'm not being too embedded with the light because the light is that little bit more sullen. It's not brashing the space. Once more, the touch of cadmium red into that just to give a slightly pinky feeling. Just let that pick up into that space too. And just along here. Now I'm going to take my size two. So my size two, my size two is still in the white spirits. And I'm going to use that once again to put a little bit more clarity into the edge of the clouds. Now I may not finish the sky now, I just want to get a feeling for what's going on and then I'll review that once I have some of the landscape in place. So once more, just putting in that sort of silver lining that you see on top of this photograph. Now again, it can be quite haphazard and uneven. Mixing this with a little bit of the red and the violet. And we just separate that colour out a little here. And you can hear the brush scratching across the paper and that's the effect we want. We're not looking for uh, a very rigid feeling into this space. And we let some of that light bleed into this area here. So the top of the cloud is influenced by these lovely lights that come down. We get a little bit of softness into these spaces. From there, I'm going to take some of this blue, and I'm going to bring it down into this lovely background water area here. That's too brash. Soften that a little. So I'm letting the idea of the horizon line of the water merge into the mountains that sit into the background of those spaces, touching up the idea of the bushes just behind there. From there, I'm going to take a little bit of the cadmium yellow deep into this same colour. So I'm looking for a much more sullen, earthy green. So I don't want it to be too brash because when you have a lack of sunlight, the landscape, as you can see, is very, very silhouetted. And that's what we're looking to try and pick up on, is that feeling of silhouetted uh, colouring into the greens. So I'm going to just suggest some of that. Just as the light comes in this way, you're getting a little bit of highlight just along these areas, and then it becomes much darker around the rest, and that's what we're looking for. So just suggesting into those areas, little bits. Now, as I said, my intention is to let the brown paper do as much work as possible on this and not to over fill the spaces. Putting, putting in. Now, putting in a little bit of red, just breaking into that, you can see a slightly darker green coming in. And going back into my big brush as before. I haven't washed my brush. I like to keep the same idea of the colour on the brush. Again, just little bits of the green coming in, not to make it too brash, some touches of red and the cadmium yellow deep. And again, scratching into my folder a little bit. Once again, less is more. Um, and you'll hear me say that quite a lot. Because the less you have to deal with, the more effective it is in terms of its impact. From there, once little touches of light just screaming through these spaces. So the sunlight coming in here has a certain impact on the landscape here to so get just a little bit more light into those spaces right through. Adding red with my green just to create a sullenness into it so it's not too brash. And yet at the same time, I want a certain liveliness. I don't want it to be too flat. So that would be too flat. I'm looking for something that has a little bit more drama, a little bit more playfulness than that there, if you like. From there, I'm going to leave that now. I'm going to take a small little brush. I'm going to take my rigger brush, a little bit of liquid, back in with some of the blue and the green, the blue and the red and the green. And I'm going to use that to try and just give a little bit of playfulness into some of this scrubby brush that we see here and there. So you can see I've 
given each element just a little bit of suggestibility, but I don't want to be too heavy handed, so I'm stopping as I go along just to do small amounts. It's important to make sure that you don't just keep painting and painting into the one space, because again, it's very easy to overpaint and make it so detailed that everything else then after that has to also be detailed and you lose that sense of freedom. As I said, holding back and only putting in suggestions of the spaces is very important. You can always add more, but if you put in too much detail, it's quite hard to take it back out and go back into that sense of freedom. So if you start off very gently and only put in very small amounts, it's often much easier. Now I'm letting this background color have a little bit more of a violety bluish tone to create a sense of distance and just scratching in the idea of little bits of unevenness onto the landscape. There's little bits of trees and bushes here which I'm just suggesting into those spaces. The bricker brush is great because it has such a flexibility and a freedom about it and I, I really like working with that. The idea of a few bushes along the landscape here Much more red. Silhouetted against the landscape, against the sky is always a nice idea because it gives a little bit more interest into the space. And every now and then, just if it's too heavy, just use your finger or another brush just to pull it down so that it's not too heavy. Just make it a little bit softer. Now from there, we move back into these areas, and they're just little, as I said, little bits of bush little bits of scrub grass, little bits of unevenness. There is a bush here, uh, a leafless bush here on the right hand side, which you can see, and I, I like that, and I'm gonna put that in because it adds a certain amount of atmosphere and suggested detail into that space. In order to do that successfully, I'm going to use a little bit of white spirit with my burnt umber, my phthalo blue, and my red, because I want quite a dark color for this. And I'm using white spirit rather than liquid because I really need the fluidity for the softness into this space, just coming up getting a sense of that against the sky. And it just gives a little bit of drama into this right hand side and gives a really nice contrast to the idea of the light coming in from the sky. Now you can see I've put a little bit more light into my foreground because I wanted to have, as I said, I found that just a bit too dark in terms of the foreground. So I'm using a little bit more light in my foreground just to give a little bit more interest to the composition, a little bit more balance. Now for the suggestion of the sheep, just take a slightly darker colour and once more, it's more of a grey violet. I'm going to take that and just going to put those in. So there's one just sitting here in the front. Start with the body shape. Again, keep it soft, don't be too rigid with the shape. There's a little bit of darkness on the underside. You can see the legs just very gently standing out. And the head is quite dark, so we show that feeling of darkness there as well. And there's one or two other little suggestions of sheep in the background. So we just put in the suggestion first, and then we can touch up on this idea of detail. Make sure they're slightly smaller in the background for scale. If you make them too big, they look out of place in the landscape. And taking a little bit of brightness, so once more the white with the cadmium yellow deep, just highlight that. Um, you can't see it in this photograph, but there's a tiny touch of red here showing through from the, the dye that's on the sheep. So I'm just going to put that in because it adds a nice little detail to it. And I'm going to just soften up the side of the head here with a little bit of light. And just make sure that I have that little bit of darkness sitting underneath here. Now for the detail. Now, um, 
I'm nearly there with this particular painting, but I think what I will do is I don't like to make my videos too long, especially if you're painting along with me or even if you're just looking at it and not painting at all. But what I think I'll do is I'll leave this here today and do this as part one and I'll come back in and I'll do a part two where essentially in any given painting, whether it is a loose free painting or whether it's a more refined and detailed painting, you towards the end need to bring all of the various different component parts together and make sure that they form a feeling of singularity while maintaining the sense of individual integrity. And so I'll do a part two with this where I bring all those bits and pieces and I'd rather make sure that they all have that sense of singularity to them. So for now, I'm going to leave this as is, have some fun, enjoy your painting adventures, and I will look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, I'll see you in part two. Bye for now, bye.